Saved custom preflight profiles are saved within the installed instance of InDesign saved to your computer, not to the document you just created. If you'd like the profile to remain with the document when you send it to a coworker, a client, or commercial printer, use the Click to Embed Selected Profile button just to the right of the Profile Selection drop-down menu to embed your custom profile in the document you're currently working on. I'm going to jump over to InDesign now. I have created a document that has photographs that I've placed, and I know that they are not formatted for print because I pulled them off the web. They are 72 resolution and they are using RGB color mode. I would expect that if I'm sending this to a commercial printer um, to have the whereabouts to know that I need to prep these images for printing and that I want InDesign to tell me something's wrong. If I know that I'm sending this to a printer and InDesign knows what print standards are because it does, um, I would want InDesign to tell me something's wrong. But InDesign doesn't know what my intention is because I haven't said I'm going to send this to print or I'm going to send this to the web or I'm making an app or uh, an EPUB from this document. One way we can tell in design what our intentions are are to create custom pre-flight presets. So by default, when you are running the pre-flight in InDesign, uh, the profile will be basic, which is the working profile. You can also change it to digital publishing, which is another preset that you can use. You can also create your own custom profile by hitting the option flyout menu in the top right hand corner of the pre-flight panel, and then choose define profiles. When you define a profile, you can see on the left hand side there's a basic and a digital publishing. You don't want to modify these, you can create your own. So create a new profile and give it a name. So I'm going to say offset printing preflight. Once you have created your own custom, you can modify the options that are available. So you can expand these drop downs to see what options are available. I don't have any color or images on this on, in this document, so I can't modify that right now. Um, but you can uh, modify different aspects. So you can say, I don't want to know if there are missing or modified links, which is a bad idea, don't do that. Um, I don't want to know when there are inaccessible URLs. But as you scroll down, you can say, well, I want to know if there's a dynamic spell check error. So those little red squigglies that we were talking about in the previous video, let me know if I haven't cleared some of those. Maybe I have a 400 page document and I didn't realize on page 391 that I missed one of those red squigglies. Uh, a good one to include is glyphs that are missing. So glyphs are special characters that are included with typefaces above and beyond your normal characters. So they could be smiley faces and things like that, but they also include um, like the Enya over an N. You can have fancy capital letters that you can substitute instead of a regular capital M. You could have a fancy capital M. But what's important about glyphs is they're tied to the typeface. So if you did you, your entire book in Times New Roman and then decided to change the entire book to be Minion Pro, there are some glyphs that are available in Times New Roman that might not be available in Minion Pro. So knowing that you have a glyph missing would be a good one. Um, and then I want to expand these. Okay, so under images and objects is what I really wanted to show you. You could indicate that you need a specific resolution. So you could say, I want to define what my image resolution should be. And I think color images should be at least 250 resolution. And grayscale images should be at least 200 resolution. Um, you could also say that if you put an image in and you didn't want the file size to be really big, you could say that color images should be no more than 400 ppi. You don't want to have 10,000 resolution images. You can also keep scrolling and there's lots of different options. I'm not going to go through each one, um, but you can indicate whether or not you want interactive documents to be present in the video, I mean in the document. So you can say, I want to run a pre-flight on interactive documents and I want to know if there's any interactive documents in here because interactive documents are bad. Uh, maybe you're designing for print and you know that the threshold for printing, you can only print on your particular printing process one eighth of an inch point, so 0.125 inch points. Let me know if I have a stroke that goes thinner than that, or maybe you don't want any strokes thinner than one point. You can say, I only want to have strokes that are one point or thicker, so give me a red flag. Tell me something's wrong if I have um, strokes that are thinner than a certain amount. And you can go through and you can you can run this. Now that you have it, when you're finishing up your document, you can change your profile to your offset printing pro preflight profile. And now, whereas we didn't have any preflight errors, we're getting errors, right? Because I have image resolution errors. Um, if I had 
overset text. All right, so if we fill this with placeholder text, and then I make the box smaller, I'm not only going to get overset text errors now, I'm going to get dynamic spelling problem. It's telling me that there's lots of words that are not spelled right because it's in Latin and my um, spelling language is in English. And so you can customize what you would see on your pre-flight panel. I would at the very least set your pre-flight preset to tell you about image resolutions, image color modes, um, make sure that all your swatches and your images used are in CMYK. Um, if you know that you're formatting for, um, a good one is if you're formatting for an interactive PDF, Swift files cannot be exported to an interactive PDF, uh, or sorry, animation that requires a Swift export can't be used. So you can set up your preflight profile to tell you if you're exporting to an interactive PDF that let me know if there's any animation included because I can't have animation, it doesn't export to an interactive PDF.